so uh, the hardware it consists of this uh, node mcu board uh, which is this esp um, 8 to double 6 module uh, we give the input of 5 volts and ground uh, through these two connectors and uh, this board it is running on 3.3 volts the same 5 volt and ground also goes to this um, sn75176 b so that's a um, by that's a uh, rs485 trans receiver and so this connection it goes to the connector and this is the 5 volts and ground which comes from the same point now uh, the connection between them is a normal uh, serial port that is the rx and the tx uh, the only difference is that when we are receiving data from this uh, trans receiver, um, then we have to convert it from 5 volts to 3.3 volts. So that's why we have this potential divider. The, all the other signals which are going from this board or to this trans receiver can be connected directly uh, via a uh, resistor and there is no uh, level translation or anything is needed. Uh, now the question could be is uh, why I did not use the standard RX and TX here and I have used a different pin that is the D7 and D8 and D7 and D8 actually they are the software serial port and uh, they, that is configured in the code it's RX and TX. Now why I have not used this uh, G, uh, the standard RX and TX port because first of all this is used for programming so if i have to program it it interferes with that programming sequence uh, the second thing is that sometime i would like to debug some of the information from here uh, so if it is not working in the future i can use this port for debugging and this software serial will be used only for communication with with this trans receiver and this connection a and b it goes to the the a and b connection of the the select em 2m uh, the meter the meter also has the a and b connection marked on it so you have to connect two wires from here to there and here is the um, the board how it looks like i have built it on a, a general purpose board and this is the connector the a and b it goes to the uh, meter this is the SN75176B um, trans receiver and this is the node MCU. And this is the other view of the board and you can see this Relimate connector where I give the ground and the V in or the 5 volts. So, and uh, this is the back side of the board and you can see the three, uh, 330 ohm resistor and other resistor and the connection it's pretty simple board now for getting the 5 volts uh, i have used this uh, use this um, power supply uh, which is from meanwell so i think it's pretty uh, known uh, company at least in india and um, so it gives 5 volts and it is neatly mounted along with the mcb so no major change and um, as you can see here um, so i have two meter one is id1 and one is id2 and uh, this is for the for the power circuit so power circuit means it goes to the uh, to the washing machine refrigerator microwave oven and water heater whereas this one i think the id2 goes to the um, goes to the lighting all the lighting loads and fan load and uh, i have enclosed this pcb uh, in a plastic uh, enclosure so that nothing uh, gets touched to the mains life uh, supply or none of the pins get shorted so this connector the red and green as you can see it goes to the a and b terminal of the rs485 and this goes to the meter by this cable and uh, this is the 5 volt which comes from another uh, two wires so from the the 5 volts power supply so uh, the pcb inside the plastic enclosure uh, neatly put in the panel so nothing is visible outside 
So uh, coming to the client code and this is the code which will be running on your laptop where you want to collect the data uh, from the meter. So um, there is no physical connection between this laptop and the board. Uh, it, everything works through this Wi-Fi. So no modification is needed on the on the laptop. Only you have to run this Python script. So what we do is that uh, we use a socket programming a query that particular IP number of the ESP8266. Uh, in your case, it could be a different IP number. You have to figure that out from your router. And uh, you have to send two messages. Basically, first is the meter number, whether it is one or two. And second is if you have just one meter, then you are sending only the default number, which is one. In my case, I have two different meters. So one is uh, ID is one and second is ID is equal to two. And then the second message that you have to send is any one of the string. Um, so this string is here. Um, so if you want to read the voltage, then you have to send this particular. So you send this particular string. And what is done is a message one and here is the message two. Now in my case, uh, since I was doing a test of uh, repeated um, querying the meter, so I put it in a list and all these commands are basically added here. So first I read the voltage, then current, then frequency, power factor and the watts. And uh, other thing that I have done is also added a feature of Excel sheet logging. So everything is logged in the Excel sheet and that's how the, um, that's how I can do further processing. Um, also the, the watts that is sent by the meter is really in, uh, in kilowatts. So I have to multiply with thousand here if the um, data string is equal to h h is nothing but the active power so if the active power is in if we receive active power then we have to multiply the whatever is the received value with thousand and basically display it and also log the data in the excel sheet so that's about the uh, the python the client script This is the code that will be uh, running on the server side or on the ESP8266 board. So I'm using um, Arduino ID for programming this. Um, and here is the setting. So you can use the same setting and you can build it and program it. Okay, so this is about the setting and give you an explanation of how the code works. So basically I have these two pins which are using, which are used as software serial for the RX and TX. Uh, you can refer to the earlier, um, slightly uh, earlier in my video, I have explained the hardware schematic. Uh, also for controlling the, the transmission and the reception of the trans receiver, I'm using two other pins and few other pins for LED. Uh, I have not really used them, but in future, if I want to see what is the status of the board uh, by some visual indication, I can use this LED. Other things are pretty much standard. So you have your Wi-Fi password and username. Okay, um, so uh, and now um, this uh, the communication that happens between this node MC or the ESP8266 board and the select EM2M um, meter is through Mod Modbus protocol. The physical layer is RS485 and the protocol is Modbus. Now there are many um, uh, many um, implementation of Modbus available, but I have to really go through the document and understand that. So instead of that, I knew Modbus protocol, how it works. So basically I have implemented it from the scratch. So you may, uh, if you find uh, some other easier implementation, you can use it. Or if you want, you can use this one as well. So some uh, enumeration for detecting if there is any failure or not. And uh, so I'm using both the serial port, one standard serial port for the uh, for the debugging purpose 
and another serial port for the RS-485 communication. Now the baud rates are different in both the case. So the meter, select meter EM2M, it runs at 9600, the standard baud rate. So I have not changed it. Now the next function is for CRC calculation needed for Modbus communication. Now again you go through the communication, uh, you go through the command and you can see that there are two different kind of uh, protocols are uh, two different kind of uh, data um, data packet that we can send over Modbus. I'm not really going into the details, so you can go through the code and this is what is done. And this is where the different commands are decoded. So if you want to read active energy, so it will read the active energy and then it will translate into a Modbus packet formation and it transmits and then gets the data. So these are the bunch of commands that we have and finally it sends the and this is the uh, main loop. So this is where it receives the data from the uh, from the client. So this is the message one and this is the message two. Uh, to keep it simple, uh, I am converting that to byte array so that I can separate out the commands. And then it does a communication uh, and it gets the response. There are a bunch of uh, status messages as well. So sometime I may be sending by mistake some unknown meter ID. So I have meter 1 and 2. But I could be sending three or four. In that case, this is the uh, section where it will detect. I may be sending some unknown command as well. So these are the bunch of commands that I'm sending. But I could be sending something other than that. So in that case also, I will know from here. Uh, from here and uh, meter, sometimes meter doesn't respond for some unknown reason. I'm not sure it doesn't respond. And so I can detect from here. So there is basically a timeout and so I can detect from that and uh, there sometimes the meter responds but the communication protocol is not detected properly either from my side or the meter it responds by a bad packet format I'm not sure but it happens extremely rarely uh, but I have seen that happening once in a while so I can uh, detect by using this particular um, if else loop. So uh, that's all about this uh, server side code. Mm, so it's basically a uh, translation of the Wi Fi command to Modbus and receive the data over Modbus and again uh, make the Wi Fi uh, packet and send it to the client. So this is what is done on this particular code. So uh, running this uh, demo is pretty simple. Uh, I have selected the lighting here. So lighting is selected and then I will run this Python script. So uh, for that I type Python and that Python client that is the name of that uh, script, the file name. And then I press enter. Enter and uh, so it is reading the voltage, the current, uh, frequency, power factor, and the watts. And um, yeah, so what, whatever we want, we can do with this data. If you want to display it properly on another LCD, you can do it. So basically the data is available for you. Just to test, I have one uh, lamp here, I'll power it on. And since I have powered it on, you can see that the uh, current consumption has gone up slightly and also the power consumption. It's a small um, reading lamp, so there is not, not much of power increase, but it it's the meter is pretty sensitive. So, and I'll turn it off again. And as you can see, the power has come down to 47 watts and the current also has come down to 238 milliamps. So, yes. And uh, the Excel file are also uh, saved here. Uh, so, 
it is let's check this uh, the log that was uh, recently done uh, we'll open it and see yes and uh, we can see that it has be uh, it has recorded all the values and also uh, it has we can plot it manually and we can uh, process the data